morning, everyone. I would like to call this meeting to order. Thank you for joining us during our weekly hybrid MS breakfast meeting. And welcome all of you to come to our board in person and virtual in this beautiful morning. Thank you. And my name is Pauline Lam from Co-Pi Realty. I'm your August program chair. At this time, I would like to invite William Hoy to lead us for a pledge of allegiance. William, and everyone please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, William. And please be seated. And I would like to welcome Sage Gomez to give us our inspiration. <laughs> um, good morning, everyone. My inspirational quote today is, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're probably in the wrong room. If you're the smartest person in the room, you're probably in the wrong room. <laughs> how human that is and how true that is, right? Thank you, Sage. And uh, thank all the affiliates and our uh, members. Always support our board meeting. Thank you. And at this moment, I would like to introduce one of our newest staff members, Tracy Chung. Do you know who is Tracy Chung? Not yet, right? And I will introduce you. Uh, for Tracy. Tracy is uh, served with as a member services. Tracy is a 2022 UCR graduate. She likes to cross stitch and get your hot pot at least once a week. Her favorite color is red, but wear a lot of black. She adopts a cat named Charlie who sleeps 24 7. Mm -hmm. Her favorite vacation spot, guess where? Cancun. Wow. <laughs> and her family goes to Vegas a lot. And so she takes it long. She's been working here for two months now and is looking forward to meeting everyone. So let's welcome Tracy Chung. Stand up. and the virtual. Thank you, Tracy, for joining WSGBR, this big family, and offer your service to us every week and every every day. Okay, thank you. <laughs> A few housekeeping tips. All participants will be muted upon entry to the MRS breakfast meeting. And should you have a question or a comment, please remember to enter it into the chat box. And for our Q and A section, the audience here, uh, please come to the microphone to ask questions so everyone can hear your question clearly. And please remember to join us weekly as we will have our hybrid MRS breakfast meetings every Thursday at 9 a.m. As always, this meeting is being recorded and will be available online on our YouTube channel, West St. Gabriel Valley Real Tours. Please remember to follow WSGVR social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also watch all our pre-recorded videos on YouTube. Please join our text message group for updates. Text WSGVR to the number 888-304-4055. Let's move on the quick tip. Quick tip. Hurdle free for CAR members. Self employment tax made easy. Get real time quarterly tax estimates and let hurdle premiums automatically track your income, expenses, and <coughs> deduction. The highly rate app is now free for all CAR members. For more details, please visit www tinyurl.com slash 2PH95 
for six Wharton to claim your free premium account today. Today's agenda consists our billions by life. Marie plus Palacios, Contempo Escrow, followed by our guest speaker, Mayor Jeff Manoni, City of Ahambra. Just a reminder, to be eligible for today's drawing, you must be a WGBR member. We will be having a attendance drawing, Amazon gift card drawing, and 50-50 raffle today. Our affiliate spotlight will be brought to you by affiliate, com affiliate committee chair, Brandon Zoranski, and vice chair, Joseph Wayne. No. Now take it away, Marie. Marie is on Zoom. Marie, give me one minute. Let me uh, unmute her. Good morning, everyone. Can Good everyone morning. hear me okay? Yes. yes. Good morning. I am Marie Palacios with Contempo Escrow, and I am excited to join the San Gabriel Board. Although I am new to San Gabriel Board, I am not new to the area. Many of you know me. Um, I've been in real estate and escrow for 28 years. I've been with Contentful Escrow in Arcadia for almost 12 years. So many of you know me because I've served actively on the boards. Um, I am very excited to be here with you guys um, today. And I look forward to my growth and meeting some of the new agents who I'm not familiar with. Um, just want to introduce you to Contempo Escrow, let you know that we're here to help you grow your business. Um, we're pretty much available um, as often as you need us. We do all types of escrow. Uh, one of the things that has become really, really exciting in the industry, I know with the market going um, in different directions right now, one of the things that I'm finding most popular um, is the mobile homes. And I have kind of become a specialist in this and, and would love to help you in any way. <clears throat> One of the things I'd always tell my clients is if you run across a mobile home um, client, don't run from it. Just call me and I can get you through the transaction. Again, I come with 28 years, tons of experience. Um, I look forward to having a work relationship with all of you. Anything you need, please feel free to call Contempo Escrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Marie. And welcome you join WSG VR, this lovely family. And thank you for your service in industry. We will support you definitely. Thank, thank you. you again. I appreciate it. Yes. And we will now have our affiliate introduction for today. All affiliates present today, please line up at the front. And we will start with uh, our affiliate rating on Zoom. First, it's Mark Wu, Allstate Insurance. Mark, or we want to go for John Wax first. John Hi. Wax, Snap NHD. John? Good morning, Pauline. Good morning, everyone. John Wax with Snap NHD for all your NHD tax and environmental needs and FHDS car form. And I wish you a wonderful day and a great caravan. Thank you. I'm unmuted now. Sorry, have I was having trouble. Yeah. This is Mark Wu with with AMS Insurance Agency for your property insurance needs. Have a fantastic caravan, everyone. Thank you, perfect. And Judy Chow, AAA Capital Investment. Good morning, Senior Officer. And I'd love to help you with loan. And uh, we can close in 15 days and we speak Chinese and English. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next is Unita Wu, Home Warranty of America. Unita? Yes, I am here. I'm just being waited for the mute. Hi, everyone. You need a woo from Home Warranty of America, your 13 month home warranty. Have a wonderful caravan. If you need any home warranty, let us know. We're here to help. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next is Teresa Lam, Corinthian Title. Good morning. This is Teresa Lam with Corinthian Title Company. It's good to see you all. And remember to drink a lot of water this, uh, in, in a hot day. Have a good day. Bye bye. Thank you so much. And we wish to see all of you, all of you come back to the board next week in person here. Now, start our life here. Beautiful thing. Are you safe to go with my name? 
Are you Quanto Sanchez of New England Funding? Together, we are your affiliates. Yay. And I am Angie Kang, first American title. Very cute. I like that. Good morning. Lina Chu from Glen Oaks Central. Have a wonderful day. Good morning, Oriana Chan with Prime Lending. Good morning. It's great to see you all. It's Lina and Kay from US Bank. Good morning, Nancy Chan. Lawyer Shiloh, have a great week. Good morning. Let's don't forget about David Twin. My name is Mario Manzanilla, reverse mortgage specialist. Let's move on. Have a wonderful day. Good morning, everyone. Chris Hahn with Jam Morgan. Have an awesome day. Good morning, David Twain with Home Call Home Warranty. I'm not wearing a mask today because it's too hot. I wish you were here so I can sell you a ticket next time. So be here. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. See how happy and energetic here, right? I want to uh, invite all of uh, our members uh, in the Zoom come back to our board, reconnect and update and consistent come back. We, we have a lot of time here and we have a lot of information want to uh, offer to you. Thank you. And thank, thank you all the affiliates speaking. Please remember to support our affiliates with your transaction. <laughs> we are happy to include open pitching to our hybrid MS breakfast meeting. Remember, if you would like to pitch your listing, you must go to www wsgbar.com, click on open page, fill out the chairman request form, and submit it no later than Tuesday night of the week you want to pitch. Today, we have two listing features. First, we have Stephen Ray, or Banker, Realty, followed by Gary Chris Holt, Hilbert Real Estate. Stephen, yes, yes. Welcome. Thank you for welcoming me. Uh, my name is Stephen Ray. Uh, I'm pitching for Student Stone, Student Stone's Lifting uh, Coal Banker Arcadia. Uh, 1903 Primrose is a great opportunity for a family or a uh, an extended family or an investor. Two units on the lot. Uh, the, the Everything about this property is large. So the on entering the dining room and living room really, really large leading to a large kitchen. Yeah, we can uh, three bedrooms in this front unit and two bathrooms. And then it leads out and it's a corner lot. So the owners have, uh, have, have arranged for the lot to be actually accessed for the rear unit or the front unit. So there are actually two units on this lot. And uh, the rear unit has two bedrooms a kitchen and a separate uh, entry and a full bathroom. Um, so it's it really is a good opportunity for someone with an uh, extended family. And uh, we're open today. We'll also be open on uh, Sunday as well. Thank you very much. Price is 1018000 So it's a great price. 1018 uh, for the price. Thank you very much. Five bedrooms. That's five bedrooms for just over a million. Thank you. Thank you. The next is uh, Gary Freeholds. Good morning, everyone. I'm Gary Freeholds with Gilbeck Real Estate. And 1724 West Grand is a really beautiful and exceptional property. It's located in North Alhambra, only one block away from South Pasadena. It's an outstanding home for large families or extended families. It has three bedrooms upstairs. One of those three is a master bedroom. It has two bedrooms downstairs. So you get that separation. It has three full bathrooms and then a large family room, a formal living room. So it has a enclosed backyard with lots of fruit trees and it's close to Alhambra Park too. So it has a lot of wonderful qualities. I'll be there today between 10 and one. We'll have it open Sunday one to four, and the list price on it is one million two seventy five. And feel free to call me if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you so much. Please support their caravan activities after the meeting. At this moment, I have a great honor to introduce you our very special speaker, Mayor Jeff Maloney. Mayor Jeff Maloney is the current Chief Staff Counsel of the Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy. 
He is the former chair of the Alhambra Transportation Commission, former vice president of the Alhambra Planning Commission, as well as former commissioner of the Alhambra Parks Recreation Commission. Yeah, graduate from the University of California, San Diego with his BA degree, then went on to the University of Southern California, Ford School of Law to receive his JD Law degree. Please tell me a very, very warm welcome to our city of Ahemba, Mayor Jeff Maloney. Good morning, everyone. Um, first thing I want to know is what is a caravan? <laughs> I mean, I, I, I followed most of that, but I was. Caravan is caravan is a special uh, offer to our agent to view the property today after the meeting, and we mostly happen on ten to one o'clock. So all the agents, all our members, can view the property and have a first spot, first time. Right. That's a good service that, that this that you provide here. Uh, just a quick note, Gary's property, I think, is in my district. So added yeah. bonus if, if anyone's <laughs> subscribing. <laughs> um, no, uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Jeff Maloney. As Pauline said, I'm the mayor of Alhambra. It's a great honor to be to be serving as mayor at this point in time. Um, I, I know, is there a PowerPoint? Yes, I have your PowerPoint, yes. I'll just do a quick few and respect your comments. And, um, I'm going to set a timer to make sure I don't go over because when you give a politician a microphone, you never know. Yeah. Um, so uh, a little bit of background about me. As Pauline said, I, I'm from the area. I grew up in Pasadena. I lived in Alhambra for about 21, 22 years now. I uh, went to school in San Diego, got my law degree at, at USC. And for the last uh, far too long, a couple of decades, I've been an attorney for the San Monica Mountains Conservancy. So it's a state agency and we buy and maintain a lot of the properties in the Hollywood Hills and Santa Monica Mountains that provide recreational and habitat opportunities for people in the Los Angeles area. One of my main things is that I have to do as, as chief counsel for the conservancy is real estate. I do a lot of real estate transactions. Um, so I'm, I'm with you. I'm, I'm with you. The, the, um, a lot of the day-to-day the -day stuff that goes, that happens in your lives, I'm sure I share similar experiences. My brother and sister-in-law are also realtors, so I've seen them over the last several years, how busy they are and how hard they work, especially on the weekends when there are family things going on and they can't be there. So I understand how hard it is, um, you know, this line of work and how difficult it can be sometimes and how time consuming. And I just want to say, I hope you guys all made a lot of money in the last couple of years um, before their morning came. But um, I, what I'd like to do today is just Provide a little bit of uh, update on what's happening in Alhambra. Um, so I have some updates on the development projects that might be of interest to you, but just generally kind of the feel for what's happening in our town. Um, and I, I, this is a slide that our staff put together. I added a few things and I'll talk about a few things after the slide shows over. So why don't we get right into it and I'll, I'll give you a couple of updates. So we'll go to the first slide. Or second slide, I guess. Let's make that third. So this is a big one, right? I drove by it on the way over, um, Raising Canes. I didn't know what Raising Canes was. Can you see, oh, is it on the, I didn't, I had no idea what Raising Canes was until they said that they were gonna open and I must have heard it from a hundred different people. Oh my gosh, Raising Canes come in, it's so great, it's so great. It's chicken tenders. <laughs> They're really good chicken tenders and people love them and the sauce is kind of addictive, but, um, it's, it was a really exciting thing to come to our community. They sought us out and they really made a point of coming here. They opened up a bunch of different uh, branches around the area uh, over the last uh, couple of months. And Alhambra was a big one. And if you ever visit, it's really neat to see inside. They've, they've done their homework and they have lots of history of Alhambra, really interesting things on the walls in there. They didn't just come, you know, do a cookie cutter drop in there. They really did some of the homework and, and try to fit it. So that's really nice. Thing. Um, Kyoto Yukatsu. Uh, this is a, uh, I'm, I'm half Japanese, I should know how to pronounce this, but, uh, <laughs> but it is a, uh, it's a, it's a Japanese barbecue type place. Um, there's similar places around. Um, I haven't been there, but uh, I've been to similar restaurants. They're delicious. This is right in the plaza next to Sprouts, near Sprouts on Main Street, which is a really interesting part of our community. A lot of stuff going on there, um, and we hope that it continues to, to grow. Uh, next slide, please. Um, you may remember um, recently there was a kind of a freak 
rainstorm in the spring that dumped a lot of rain on us. And that what that that photo in the upper left is the okay. ceiling of the target right now. Wow. Amber, one of the the most um, successful, busiest targets in the nation, I was told. And they got so much rain, and they hadn't properly cleaned their rain gutters on the flat roof, and it just collapsed. Mm -hmm. And what happened also was when the roof collapsed, it busted the the fire sprinklers, so the entire store was a loss. Everything in the store was a loss. So they got rid of all the the inventory and they had to repair. And the, the, the happy photo you see in the bottom right there is the store manager cutting the, uh, the ribbon when it reopened. And I'll tell you, I, um, I, I try to be active on social media and post things that are relevant to the community and different things that are happening and policies that are going into effect. I posted a photo of the Target reopening and it got more hits and likes and interactions than anything I've done in six years. <laughs> Goes to show you. We'll go to the next slide. It's open and it's beautiful, by the way. It's really nice. These are some projects that are under construction right now. Um, this is, um, it's a, if you drive down Main Street and Chapel, that, that uh, just south of the Main Street and Chapel corner towards the, uh, the Sprouts there, there's a whole bunch of construction going on. There's some big projects going on. So this is, I think this is the biggest one, 62 units at 128 South Monterey. I think this view is looking, you're looking north on Monterey. So those buildings in the distances on Main Street and off to the left at the Sprouts and Bay State Street. So this is a, a really beautiful project that's going and it's been in the works for, for a while now. So hopefully that'll be online soon. Next slide. This is on the chapel facing side, another 10 units that is directly adjacent to that property we just saw. And then again, I think this is uh, a, lost track of my addresses, but this is directly adjacent to the previous project. So we're going to have a whole new frontage there on Chapel Street, plus on Monterey and Bay State. There's going to be, a, this is just a, a big um, complex there that is going to have a lot of units coming online soon. Uh, this, I, um, I, forgive me, I don't, I, I don't know the breakdown of ownership versus rental in these locations, but I think there's a combination of both. Um, this is an area where some people would drive by in the community that, that um, are a little bit more resistant to change and seeing development. They say, what's going on? What's going on? This is an area that's right in the middle of our downtown. And it is in walking distance to restaurants and shopping and amenities. And for, in my opinion, if we're going to be responsible about development, keeping pace with population growth and housing demand, this is where we build uh, units, especially for for um, couples, singles, small families just getting started. This is a great area. Next slide, please. Uh, again, uh, just in this complex, there are another 28 units going in right next door. What are the next slide? Um, we have a couple of exciting projects. You know, I don't know how many of you track the, the requirements from the state to make sure that we're keeping up with housing demand, zoning our communities, providing affordable housing. This is, this is going to be increasingly difficult for cities throughout the state, but especially in Southern California and the LA area to do, just because land is in such short supply. So what we challenged our, our staff to do is find areas of the city where, where the city could actually take the lead on creating some affordable housing. Now, these, these are not homeless shelters. These are not um, transitory um, developments. These are developments for people who live in this community who are being priced out. They are employees of our school district, our hospitals, our food service, service industries, they um, increasingly over the last several years have found that they can't afford to live here, especially when, when rents go up, ownership seems out of the question. So this proper, this project in particular, which is gonna be at the corner of Main and Second, just south of the Rick's Burgers right there, next to the at t building, if you're familiar with Alhambra, this is a fa uh, 40 family oriented unit. So we're talking two, two and I think some three bedroom units that are going in here. So these are really geared towards families who are part of our community already that we want to make sure have an opportunity to stay in Alhambra. That's an exciting project with the supportive services on site as well to make sure people can, can remain in these facilities. The next one is, next slide is a similar project. This is on North Chapel on the other side of Maine from the property, the project we saw a bit earlier. It's 44 units. These are, I think, mostly one and two units. Um, I think they're more geared towards um, smaller uh, families and groups. S similar project, and they're both going through. Okay. Um, a couple other things that are under construction that I don't have pretty photos for are at Marengo and Valley. This is 
Amelia Court. These are 126 condo units, um, about 30,000 square foot medical offices along Valley Boulevard. This was a, I think uh, we called it Camellia Court. It was a um, uh, retirement community that the population had just decreased, decreased, decreased over the years to the point where there, it wasn't really viable as, a, as an ongoing proposition. So the owners wanted to make it into housing units or purchased in this area. So it's a, it's actually a beautiful project. They're planting lots of trees there. And when everything comes online, I think it'll be really nice to go look at. We have the Stoneman project north of Garfield Elementary School in North Alhambra, 700 Stoneman. These are 79 condo units that are going in there. And then there's a small condo unit at the corner of Chapel and the Road that's, that's underway as well. And as I take my kids to um, sports practice at Almanzar Park, I drive by that all the time. So I get to see the progress. A little slower than I expected, but it's coming online. Next slide, please. Um, here's Tesla. It's exciting, right? Uh, having a nice Tesla leadership coming into Alhambra. This is part of Auto Row on West Main Street. So this is, it's always nice. Um, Tesla is recognized as a, as a luxury electric car brand. Uh, hopefully they're gonna make some more affordable models, but it says something about the community that Alhambra is that they feel they can be successful in our town. Next slide, please. This is really exciting news, moving away from, from kind of the housing economic projects. But um, if anyone grew up in the area, they may have remembered going to the Shore Clinic, the, the, the county medical clinic to get vaccines. And I think they did dental appointments. There are all sorts of different things for many years. It's been shuttered. It's been closed for a couple of decades now, I think, at least as long as I've been in the community. Um, and it's, I got a tour of it and it, um, it's pretty interesting down there. <laughs> Don't go in there on, on, uh, on a dark night when there's no light. Uh, it's, uh, it's not the most welcoming place. Uh, but fortunately, the council, the city council a couple of years ago decided that it, this would be a great opportunity for us to invest in a community center. Um, Alhambra doesn't really have a community center, a proper community center. We have some community rooms at our parks. We have a senior center at, uh, at uh, Story Park. We have rooms at the library, but we don't really have a, a center that can, that can address multiple needs throughout the community. So we looked into this and it, we did a feasibility study and we, we went back and forth about what it might look like and what the features could be. And we settled on something and we're really excited about it until our consultant told us it would, it would cost about $23 million to build. <laughs> wow. So we don't have, Alhambra is, is doing well, uh, but we don't have $23 million sitting around um, for a community center. So our options were things like getting into bonds and um, you know, additional taxes. And none of these were very attractive to us. Um, but we happened to know that the state had uh, one of the largest surpluses in history this last year. And we had two legislators um, in Susan Rubio and, and Mike Fong, our new assembly member in the area, that are, that are very interested in helping communities like Amber. And they said, do you have any projects that you'd like to to see funding in this next budget. And he said, actually, we do. Uh, so we told him the price and they both said, that's a lot of money. But the two of them independently went in their own houses, the legislature pushed for funding for this. And they were able to find full funding for this project. We got $25 million. Wow. So really big thanks to uh, Senator Rubio and Assemblymember Fong for pushing and fighting for a community like Alhambra. But we had, this isn't quite show already, but it's, it's we had plans, we had ideas, and we asked, and, and they, they got it for us. It's a really exciting thing. We're, we're looking at 25,000 square feet of indoor activity space. So small classrooms, small activity rooms with a large multi-purpose room. There's a it's sort of a, a, a rendering there, an illustration, doesn't really give a great um, idea of what this might look like. But when we went through it, it, it's, it seems like a wonderful project, a wonderful opportunity it would be sort of an outdoor, indoor, outdoor space with a, a large multi-purpose room. It would be facing north. This, this is directly adjacent to more field. So instead of looking at a building, you'd be looking at a wide open field where Alhambra High school plays sports, and we're looking at, at future collaborations with them to, to make sure that that area is more open to the public. So this is a real great opportunity. It's years down the road, but we have funding, which is incredible. So um, it's an exciting project. We have a next slide. Forget the next slide. 
I won't bore you the details of this, but uh, suffice it to say, we are undergoing a comprehensive zoning code update in the city, and this will affect development throughout the community. This hasn't been done in Alhambra for, for several decades, and it's long overdue. We recently did our general plan and our housing element, which dictates what the housing zoning should look like in the city. Now, this is the follow-up to make sure that it does look like that. These are all the rules that will apply to future development. And I think it's relevant to this group because it really will dictate what future development and housing and, and uh, land use will look like in the future. So um, if you're interested, that's a little schedule of uh, meetings. You can feel free to attend and give your feedback to, to the council and other decision makers. Next slide, I think it's the same topic. So these are the, the um, running on time here, so I won't go through this, this laundry list, but uh, basically these are all the different things that will happen. We're looking at really revitalizing our, our Valley Boulevard corridor, especially in the west part of town. It has been under a, a, a zoning um, plan for many years that doesn't really allow a lot of use, a lot of creative use. So we're looking to change that Main Street as well. Um, and I think that is it. Is that the last slide? Yes, that is the so, last slide. So that's my, that's, those are my sort of <laughs> slide, my prepared remarks. I just want to finish the, the um, my comments and then we'll uh, for any questions. But a, a couple of things that we have in the works here that I think focus more on quality of life and I think will make Alhambra a more attractive community to live and to buy. Um, the first is a, um, a pedestrian safety plan that we're working on. Um, I've seen in the news too many times lately, we have incidents where a vehicle has a crash to the pedestrian and the pedestrian loses. We've had several fatalities, we've had several very serious injuries where it's just a function of drivers not paying attention or frankly, the, the, the way that the infrastructure is constructed is not with the safety of pedestrians in mind. And as a father of two young kids, um, that's always at the top of my mind when they're walking around, walking the dog, going to their friend's house. I want to make sure that we are constructing our community to be as safe as possible. People like them are senior citizens who may not drive as much. So that's a that's a plan that's coming up, and we're very excited about that. We just hired a consultant to help us put together that plan. We also have a, uh, a comprehensive sustainability plan that we're working on that will address all issues of sort of livability. As we suffer through the, this heat wave, we understand how that impacts our communities. We want to make sure that we're not only um, implementing policies that help us be more sustainable, but help us mitigate that in the short term. Things like opening the pools for longer hours where people can, can, um, can use them, having cooling centers so our seniors and, and people who may not have air conditioning can go and just get a, a little arrested from the heat. So there's lots of um, long-term plans like this that I think are really focused on quality of life that will make up for it really attractive community. So um, with that, I see my time, my, I went over a little bit, 15, 16 minutes, um, but I, I just want to say thank you. Like I said, don't give a politician a microphone, but if you do, make sure they have a time limit. So thank you, Pauline, for that. Uh, okay, so I just, I'll, I'll, I'll wrap this part of it up. It's really an honor to be here. I, I've been in this room a few different times for mixers, and I think a few years ago, just as an introduction when I was running for office. Thank goodness I'm not running for office this year and I, my heart goes out to all the candidates who, who have to torture themselves, but I will be up in two more years, so keep your eye out. <laughs> um, and with that, I just want to say thank you for letting me be here and uh, good luck in all your all your endeavors and I'm happy to take questions at this point. Oh, I, I live in Alhambra for over... No, yeah, I live in Alhambra over 35 years. Um, my area, um, Fremont and Hillman, there's one empty building. It was a uh, library right. before the new library. And but now it, since that library finished, I mean, moving, that building stay vacant. Uh, so I, I just wanted to get update what's happening. What's happening? Yeah, it, it depends on the week. Um, there's there's a new idea for that property um, several times a year. I mean, really, there's what we could use it for this. And, and we want to make sure that we're being responsible. One thing that, that property suffers for, if we try to use it for something, is that there's not a lot of parking at that at that site. Um, so different ideas have come up, making it sort of a neighborhood park or just a little square where people can go and, and you know sit on a bench and, and enjoy the uh, shade of a tree. Um, there's been talk about um, 
Yeah, I don't I don't disagree. Um, I think that there's probably a better use than just having an old vacant building there. Uh, I know that that was years ago they were talking about having a police substation there, but um, there's lots of different ideas. Right now, there's there's nothing set in stone. But I'm with you. We need to do something. Thank you. Um, thank you so much for coming today. And um, I too am a long time Alhambra resident. However, I'm also a long time member of this association and very familiar with the very well established Maloney name. And your family has been great. I'm wondering if you happen to be a descendant of Marie Maloney, who was a long time member of okay. us and we love dearly. Um, Cousin Marie, I, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, my, my dad's family grew up in Eagle Rock and there were, um, I, I never say no because there were 11 of them. There are you know, Irish Catholic well, I knew She had a very large family. Yeah. She would drive there on Linder Exa. Yeah, there, you know, there's- um, Maloney the, Plumbing. Yeah, uh, Tom Maloney, the, the Tom Maloney's, um, I don't think we're related, but I sure benefited when I was going knocking on doors in my campaign. They, half the people I think voted for him because they thought I was related to them. So, so I didn't say no. <laughs> no, they're they are great. Yes, sir. Good morning. Uh, uh, good morning, and thank you for coming. I do have a couple of questions. One is the, uh, the on Fremont North of Mission. There's been a vacant lot for a long time. There's been some kind of Talks about developments yeah. and housing and stuff like that. And but I don't know what's going on. So that's question number one. And number two is with all of this development, the traffic, household Hambra, you know, I wish the seven thing would have been a completion, but without that, you add we're adding all of these units. We're bringing in a thousand more cars. And right now going to Fremont and Pass Valley takes half an hour to go to Pasadena. So yeah. how is that gonna impact? How is Alhambra going to deal with the infrastructure with the new development? So those are sure. Um, we'll start with the the Fremont and Mission property just north of the Coles there. That was a former, I think it was the aluminum extrusion site. Um, so it's a long history of industrial use there. It is zoned for um, industrial and um, um, I, I forget what the exact use is, but it, it's not for general retail. But it is for sort of agricultural retail, where where that definition would allow for um, a, a home improvement store. So the most recent proposal there was to have a Lowe's go in. So Lowe, the, that was approved by the city council. Lowe's really wanted to be in Alhambra, um, but there was a local group that sued the city over approving that uh, as a Lowe's, and that um, went through a whole bunch of different permutations. And um, there's no there's no plan for it right now. I heard rumors that Lowe's was interested in coming back and doing a proposal there, but I'm not sure what the status is. So that's the most likely scenario at this point. Um, I don't think housing is, housing is not allowed there under the current zoning. And I think frankly, the environmental remediation that would have to happen there to allow housing would, would be pretty difficult and costly. So there are some different ideas out there, but we'll have to see on that one. But it is a, it's a prime location for some type of uh, good development that really benefits the community. And I'd like to see, frankly, for there's a little park um, just north of that property, uh, uh, Emory Park. It's our smallest park. It's a little tiny little area. I'd like to see this development at least uh, enhance that a little bit as well to give some sort of community benefit to the neighborhood right there as well. Yes, sir. Thank you for coming. Wait, I'm sorry. I didn't answer the question about traffic. That's a, that's an important one. Um, we. You're right. Uh, when we when we allow these developments, when we are almost required by the state to to approve these developments, the state has changed completely changed the way that cities analyze traffic impacts. And instead of looking at how you the, the surrounding area is affected by traffic, they're using a different metric. It's called vehicle miles traveled. So they have to look at a project and they compare it to baseline for the project or no project. And what result results in fewer vehicle miles traveled total. Um, and what, what this basically comes out to is if you have a housing project that's closer to the job center, that's going to result in a lower vehicle miles traveled than if you have a comparable project in San Bernardino, right? So if you have a project in Alhambra, people work downtown LA, fewer vehicle miles traveled than San Bernardino working in downtown LA. That's the new metric that we have to abide by. So uh, one way of putting it is the state doesn't care about traffic in the communities. 
So it falls on us. And we have to make sure that we're paying attention to that. And we can't force people to, to not drive around town anymore. But like I was talking about earlier, developments along Main Street, where there are amenities, let's, let's, let's encourage people, instead of driving, to walk down to Sprouts or the restaurant instead of just driving everywhere. So that's one way we can do it. Another big undertaking that we are in the middle of right now is using funds from the 710 tunnel that didn't that was uh, essentially killed by LA Metro. Those funds are still available and they have earmarked quite a bit of that those funds for Alhambra. What we're looking at, at is a, a reconfiguration of the 710 stub, the 710 north of, of uh, the 10 freeway between the 10 and Valley and, and uh, doing revamping the on and off ramps at Fremont, Atlantic, and Garfield. And the idea is to reduce the number of cut through trips, people that, that are going up that stub driving through Alhambra somewhere else to cut down on the number of those trips. That could result in, in as, as far as our traffic consultants go, tens of thousands of car trips a day, reduction of tens of thousands of car trips a day if this is done correctly. So that's all computer modeling. Who knows what it'll actually be that these projects completions are 10, 12 years down the road. But that is something that if we can really fundamentally reformat the way cars travel through Alhambra, we can make an impact uh, um, in our consultants say up to 10% improvement in traffic. So it's, uh, it's not, it's not uh, gonna solve things, but it's, uh, it's pretty significant improvement considering doing nothing, the traffic just gets worse and worse and worse and worse. So we are laser focused on that right, right now and it's a, big, it's a big priority for the city. Oh, thank you for coming. Um, I actually, I gave you, I, I messaged Mike Fong and told him you gave him props for your community <laughs> center. Um, I wanted to talk about the uh, ADU uh, process in Alhambra. ADUs are the probably the easiest way to do affordable housing in any city. Mm -hmm. um, the process here is really long and the permitting is really expensive, is trying to lower the cost and speeding it up part of that rezoning process you guys are doing. Yes, it has to be. And that's something that the council has talked about. You know, be, to be honest, when, when the new state law came down about ADUs, there was some resistance. And, and, you know, it seems like a big change to the community. But we do recognize exactly what you said, that it is a, it's a um, fast and um, efficient way to increase housing stock across the board, and especially affordable housing. Because these are going for family members or, or small families or singles. Um, so it is a, a good way to do that. What I'm proposing is that we adopt what some of the other cities in the area have done, the sort of pre-approved plans, right? You come in and you don't have to start from scratch every time you come in for an ADU. We might have three or different four models, depending on the size, configuration, style. You say, I'd like to do that one. And the plan's already approved, you know, so long as it fits in that location so they can skip an entire step of review through the, through the permitting process. I think that is a, that would be a big step forward. I'd like to reduce costs as well. I've, we're gonna at least consider that. The problem is we need to make sure that the staff time and all the, the review that does go into the process is covered. We can't be in the, the city can't be in the red over something like that. But at the same time, if we make the approval process cheaper and more efficient, then hopefully those costs come down as well. But I agree with you 100%. Yes, sir. I thank you for coming out. Uh, Alhambra is very progressive and we're pleased with that. A quick question on, on your report there, you said you're eliminating the occupancy permit. Um, could you speak to that? Um, I think that's a, that's a very particular um, thing when it comes to a business that is switching that is, that is switching their business model. Um, in the past, what we've had is we've had a business, say a, I don't know, um, I think one example I remember was a, I think it was sort of a, beauty salon and they and they just said this isn't working and they wanted to switch to an after school tutoring program right so these are not huge impactful uses pretty pretty minor things they're not going to do a lot to the building maybe some minor internal improvements but they 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 could switch they could do it but then they were waiting six months just to get approval for the documents and what we want to do is make sure that we're not um, creating more difficulties for small businesses who want to pivot and maybe into a different area or maybe they're selling and the new owner wants to do something and we just want to make sure that they're not being held up unreasonably because it's, you know, if they're adding a, a, a giant you know, um, oven range for a restaurant, we want to make sure we have fire inspection, right? But if they're going from one office to a different kind of office and just changing the sign out front doesn't really seem um, the most pressing thing that we need to go in there and do a six-month review of uh, 
the occupants of there. So that is, I think, I don't, I, I forget how it was listed on there, but it's, it, we're not completely getting rid of it, but we are trying to make sure that we're not um, creating more red tape for, for small businesses. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, thank you for being here with us today. Uh, you mentioned supportive services in some of these project sector building. What type of supportive services are you referring to? You know, uh, this is still, we haven't uh, settled on this yet, but we, we've done these um, projects as partnered with affordable housing developers. And what they will do is, is assess the needs of the clientele that come in there. Um, but I think, you know, it's some of these in, in other developments that I've seen, it's, it's um, um, you know, counseling, uh, not uh, therapy type counseling, but counseling to make sure that people are on track to, to, to keep up with their rent, to make sure that they're on track, understanding their own finances, to make sure they can remain in a place like that. Uh, it, it really depends on the type of clientele that goes in there. And I, I hate to be vague about it, but the funding for these projects is, is it's a whole world unto itself. And the, the developer has to go in and they go after certain types of funding. And if they get that, that funding will have certain requirements. So it's still a little bit up in the air right now, depending on the types of different affordable housing funding we get. It might have the requirements for the types of tenants, types of services that are provided there. But the, the, the intent is to make sure, I mean, the general intent is that those supportive services will help people remain in that permanent housing, um, to remain in, in stable housing until they can get on their feet and maybe rent a different place or buy someplace else. So that, that's the overall intent. So they don't end up um, you know, getting priced out of the community or worse, uh, homeless out on the streets. Do you have a date here for uh, address us with all your information? This is not really a question, but it's maybe just a suggestion or whatever. Like, uh, have you heard of the seven ten of the UA? They went, they went to stop at the Ten freeway now, and right now stops at the valley, which impact uh, valley in the Fremont, and the people there are so back there. I understand which they stop, but they know when they continue to go forward. But what would it be if you guys would continue through Alhambra, which can distribute the traffic on the center, come everything in. The one that they have to go to Main Street yeah. on the stair to get off in the Valley yeah. and they go to Fremont, they could they would go out on on the Main Street and eliminate the sub traffic. Right. Uh, it's a good question, and you're not the first person to suggest that. Um, so Alhambra right now is in a position of having to come up with different ideas. We vet different ideas. We have our own traffic consultant comes up with with them. Um, concepts and then measures it by the traffic data that we got from Caltrans and Metro. And that particular idea of uh, both uh, continuing the stub or continuing some sort of connection up to Mission and even up to Huntington Drive, they were studied. And they actually um, do not improve traffic. They don't, they don't make it better. So I wish I had these slides and I'm sorry that I don't, but there's these um, computer models that they base on, on estimates of traffic. I think it's 25 years from now or something. In the future. And when you look at the different proposals that are out there, um, there's one that that significantly reduces traffic throughout the entire region, at least on the surface streets. And that is the one that is that we're now kind of getting behind and pushing a little bit. And that is taking the 710 step and not eliminating it, but making it into a, a city arterial street. So it'd be a four-lane street, two lanes in each direction, controlled by traffic stops, and then improving those on and off ramps. And I really don't want to get too far into the weeds here right now, but one of the main one of the main problems we have right now is the backup of traffic going east on the 10 once you get to about Ramona and the 710 coming from downtown LA. So think about it. You have cars coming south on that stub trying to go east. You have cars coming north on the 710 trying to go east. And you have traffic from the 10 from downtown LA trying to continue east. And right, if anyone's driven back to the San River Valley from downtown. I do it often. And right around that point, you kind of come around this little curb and traffic starts to back up and you see this, you know, this beacon of hope and it's a 710 North to Valley Boulevard and it's wide open. Everyone's all meant to do that. And people use Waze now. And Waze says, this is the quickest way to get home to Arcadia or just Pasadena or even, you know, Sierra Madre Monrovia. The quickest way is not to stay on that backed up 10, but to take that extra three mile of the 710 up into Alhambra and then drive through Alhambra and you'll be home soon. 
So what we're trying to avoid is that scenario. No traffic engineer in the right mind would ever have created a freeway stub that ends at a road like Valley Boulevard. You never see that. That doesn't happen. The reason they did that is because they would be that much closer to connecting that uh, up to the, to the 210 in Pasadena, but that's not happening now. So do we just leave that and, and let people suffer through traffic, especially in that part of Alhambra? And for me, as an elected member of the council, as mayor, that's not an acceptable scenario where we just continue to burden the people in Southwest Alhambra with traffic on their streets, cutting through their neighborhoods. That's not acceptable. So we have to look at this. And the idea is that if you improve the way all those different routes merge there, so there's not that backup, and then you improve the on and off routes so that the traffic getting on that weird intersection at Fremont and Valley and, 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 and Atlantic and Garfield, if you if you um, improve that back up there, people, it'll actually be faster to stay on the 10 East going up to San Gabriel Boulevard, to Rosemary Boulevard, even the 605. So you keep people on the freeway farther east where they want to go rather than driving through a community like Alhambra and our neighboring communities. So that's kind of the fundamental idea there. Um, and that's the only scenario, the only proposal that actually improves traffic in the area. So. Um, just by by default, that's kind of what we're looking at. But it is an exciting project. There's a lot of um, side benefits to that as well as we go forward. So I encourage everyone to participate in that process. That's going to affect the whole San Gabriel Valley. So we're going to be doing a lot of um, public and community outreach over the next year or so. I, oh, we have time for one more question. Okay. Thank you, Mayor Maloney, for answering all that question. I'll um, have last one then. Um, the short community center that you mentioned, it's really great to hear that it is a community center. I i know that building has been vacant for a very, very long time. Um, but aside from that building, there is another building next to it, is that correct? Yeah, there's a fire station right next door. Oh, okay. So I thought there was a second building. I was wondering what would have happened to that. There, um, there might be a little storage unit out to the side, but that's very small. The other, the, there's another brick building right there. That's the fire station. That is not going to be affected. Um, uh, the the clinic itself, I think there was an original building, and then later they added on a different building. So it kind of depending on the your vantage point, it might look like two different buildings, um, but it's sort of a it's like an F if you look at it from above. It's it's this. Yeah. Thing. So um, we're going to retain part of the historic structure there and reuse that. And that was important to the community that we do that to kind of make sure that we don't just erase that part of our history. So we're gonna keep that same kind of brick motif and retain some of the old historic structure while building some new state-of-the-art facilities there as well. Great, yeah. thank maybe, you. Maybe, maybe the realtor's gonna have one of their events there at some time. Sounds good, great. Um, thank you so much. You know, it's very special time. I know Mayor Maloney is so busy. He has very, very big schedule, and I'm so glad and really so exciting and have a great honor to have you in person at all board. And if you have any questions, Mayor, can you take a little more time at the meeting and come up to meet with him and ask a question directly? And we all know Ahembra is a very important city. Uh, surrounding our neighborhood, our place. Uh, and Hempa is a gateway to San Gabriel Valley. So we're so appreciate. We have a mayor and the city council and his all team to serve with us. Because let's give him a, another big applause. San <laughs> Thank you. And yeah, it's the most fun time of our program today. I'll make it short, okay? The first is attendance drawing. And uh, you hear the room? And today, we our part is uh, $775. Who wants to win? Yeah. 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 Oh, okay, you focus, right? Okay, great, great. And if you if you are the winner, please say I'm here. And then if you're on Zoom, please type in your ERA name and your email address to say to let, let us know you are here. And if we don't get a winner today, and next week will be how much? 
Wow, a good number, $800. So I want to encourage all of you to attend the meeting in person or virtual. And I will call your name three times. If you do not respond, and it will be move on. No exception. Really? Let's start. Let's go. Go. Julie Lai, I think Julie Lai, this name is so familiar. Julia Lai, Julie Lai, are you here? Not here? Second time. Julie Lai, third time, Julie Lai. Sorry, not here. So next week, the pot will accumulate to $800. We encourage you to be sure to attend either live or virtual. And now is the most exciting time. We have three gift cards, Amazon gift card. Each is $25. And I wish all of you can win this prize. Winner, Cecilia Huang, over banker, George Ramsey. So lucky you are. Yeah. <laughs> How lucky you are. Do you want to share? This person is our vice chair of legislative committee. I'm not so sorry, sorry, Emirates Committee. We never second time. How lucky. Come to join. Marion Cabotel. Emerald Royalty Investment. Thank you so much. Okay. So lucky you are. And next week. You will be one of the three gift card winner. Come here. Okay. Now, uh, please make sure to participate in our education classes. A list of upcoming classes is displayed on your screen. 45 hour ERE license renewal continuing education. It will happen on tomorrow, Friday, August 19th, 9 30 to 12 30 p.m. Bring destination two days course. This is a free class, and you can get the destination from NAR. Take advantage to get this one next Tuesday and Wednesday, August 23rd, 24, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eight, eight hour MRO live webinar continuing education on next Wednesday, August 24. 9 a.m. to 4.30, and the cost is $129. April, April certification course, two days. It will happen on Tuesday and Monday, August 29th and 30th, 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Cost is uh, for member, $89. $109 for no member. Refresh, refresh member is I believe that's thirty-five dollars. So take advantage to attend all those classes offered by education committee. Now, it's a real money time. <laughs> 50, 50 raffle, and I also invite Jer Jeff Maloney, mayor, our mayor, to give us this lucky draw. Lucky money, how much? Forty dollars. Okay, great. The lucky winning ticket, 670. Wow, it's enough. If you have this ticket, seven, four, zero, eight, six, seven, zero, seven, four, zero, eight. Not here. Karen, Karen, second time to win the 50-50 raffle. And I, I really appreciate all of you to support WSGVAR Foundation. And with your support, we can do the charity for our community and we give the scholarship to the student. Thank you so much. Okay, now, quick announcement. We are having a party 
this is a new message. Join us for our 100th birthday party on Friday, September 15th from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. And there will be food, drinks, fun games, and karaoke dancing. And I know there's a surprise program. So welcome everyone. We will, we will conduct uh, this party here in person, but you need to RSVP. So, and then next one is, oh, I want to mention this one is not in the uh, list. September 9th, 5 to 7 p.m. We will have a local can election candidate. It will happen here. And we will invite uh, uh, the three cities uh, candidates for the city councils come here to share their opinion with us. And we will also invite uh, city council, five city city council here. So it's a great time to, to meet our uh, officials and uh, future officials uh, in person. So I encourage you, but uh, we only have 200 seats, limited seats. You need to RSVP. I believe you already received the email. And save the date for our installation mansion. Friday, December 2nd, 2020. Tickets are now on sale. Sponsorship opportunities available. Please call or email Balan Barrios for sponsorship information. Please join us next week, August 25th, as we welcome our affiliate panel. Their topic will be mobile homes. Just because it's mobile doesn't mean you cannot sell it. Once again, congratulations to WSGBR for your 100 years. Thank you, all of you, to join today's meeting. And we want to see all of you next Thursday at 9 a.m. This meeting is now adjourned.